Oh no, a scary monster is coming this way. The only way to stop it from eating you is to go ahead and click like and subscribe on this video. <laughs> Welcome to Monster Bash 3. Monster Bash started out as a collab between four friends and has grown to include over a dozen artists. Each of us drew seven monster body parts. We combined all of our drawings and then we each randomly chose seven new cards. The only rule for Monster Bash was that you had to create a monster using your seven cards, but you can interpret them any way that you want. These are the seven cards that I randomly picked. Not gonna lie, I spent a lot of time procrastinating before I finally figured out what I wanted to do with these cards. I wanted to create a monster who lived on the ocean and tried to camouflage itself as a ship. Except I wanted it to be doing a terrible job of it. like very obviously still be a monster and not be fooling anybody. In the end, I came up with this beached ship monster idea, and it's definitely up for debate whether or not this guy is still alive. I got an armadillo body card, arms and legs not included. It literally said that on the card. And that's what I decided to make into the ship's body. I decided to build the body out of cardboard because I had cardboard and I decided to glue it together using hot glue because I had hot glue. Unfortunately, this came back to bite me in the butt when I also decided to use a product that I had already on hand, which was polymer clay, which has to be baked. Luckily, just as I was about to start sculpting, I thought, girl, what are you doing? And I decided to make a tin foil frame that I could attach the polymer clay to and actually put in the oven. I combined a few different cards for the body. I knew I had one with holes, one with a bunch of creepy eyeballs, one with an open mouth with fangs and a tongue sticking out. All of those were from Will McDaniel's Conjured Craft and Nerdcraft HQ. <laughs> This clay that I'm using is Sculpey Firm Polymer Clay, and the tools are a toothpick and whatever else I could find around my little crafting area. All right, you know what time it is. It's your boy, Allball, here for his cameo. He knows that he's really the star of this show and he's not gonna let anybody forget it. So while I was trying to do as much work as possible, as quickly as possible to get this video up, he decided he was gonna steal all of the parts and your hearts and knock all of them onto the floor. Let's leave a little heart down in the comments, guys, for All Ball. I really couldn't build these things without him. The tin foil frames actually worked out beautifully and then I was able to super glue the pieces I had sculpted onto the cardboard. The next thing I wanted to do was make the deck of the ship. I used super super thin balsa wood for this. I'm talking 1 32nd of an inch I'm pretty sure and I scored it using the back of my X-Acto knife. I've started saving every interesting piece of plastic I find in a junk drawer for crafting on these projects, and most of the parts of this ship that you're gonna see are from that drawer. Ship masts are the long wooden sticks that go down the center of a ship and usually have the sails attached. Well today, we're gonna use legs. I know some people are about to be real triggered right now because I was triggered while building this part of the boat, but I got a card that was just a bunch of holes. We know why, people can't stand them, but I had to put them in my boat. I glued on the monster's tongue and added on some tiny cannons. I 
I needed a base for this build and this sushi container was actually the perfect size. I used some pink insulation foam and carved out a space for the ship. And then I covered it in tin foil thinking that I might use resin to cover it and make it look a bit wet, but I scrapped that idea because I actually liked how the tin foil looked once I painted it and it kind of looked like an alien world rocky ground cover. So I just went with that instead. There's just nothing like seeing your piece come together after you prime it. I used gray primer spray paint from Krylon and then I went over it using an assortment of acrylic paints. The guys in my Discord really helped me out with this because they've been giving me beginner painting videos for painting miniatures for Warhammer and I think I've definitely improved in my painting abilities since watching them. Of course, with that being said, unfortunately, it does lead to more scary and grotesque monsters instead of cute, adorable things like it was probably more my style to do um, in the beginning. But this channel has always been evolving and I don't know where it'll end up. And I like that. But anyway, I'm using mostly Vallejo paints to do this and I'm using some synthetic brushes that I got specifically for this project. They aren't any specific brand name, I just wanted something with a point so that I could do these little lines. And then, oh my gosh, so how? I got all the way to here and then I realized, wait, I was missing two cards. So I was racking my brain trying to figure out what I wanted to do and I came up with the idea of making these... <laughs> I say I came up with this idea. But have you ever thought you had an idea um, and told your significant other about it only for them to tell you that they were actually the one who suggested that to you in the first place? And then you think back and you go, oh yeah. Um, well, anyway, that's what happened. So my husband came up with this idea that since I had this thing beached on land, maybe it was decaying and there were all of these plants that were growing out of it. I had a card that could have been interpreted a million different ways. Uh, at first I thought it kind of looked like cheese or the night sky, but in the end I made it the little fungus pouches. <laughs> that sounds so gross. The little fungus pouches that these, these spore flowers are growing out of. <laughs> and I painted them a neutral color because I was going for a pretty washed out neutral decaying vibe with the color scheme for this entire build. The only thing I really did to the tin foil base that I had spray painted was go over it with some white um, dry brushing and I added a, some white highlights here and there throughout the piece. Just to give it a little something something. I ended up doing a lot to the scales. Um, first I used this wash that my neighbor had gifted me and that worked fairly well. I used that on the entire boat. But then I wanted to make it a little bit darker so I went in and filled in some of the cracks. And then I got carried away and started trying to do like edge highlighting on different parts of it. And overall I still think that made it pop out more so I'm glad that I did it but I definitely need to work on that technique. Hey, I want to say a huge thank you for watching this video and if you made it all the way to the end, comment gold star down in the description box below and I will come by and put a gold star emoji next to your comment. <laughs> Let's see how many we get. I'll post about it in my next video. 
Don't forget to watch the other people's builds in this collaboration. They're all gonna be linked down in the description box below and they're gonna be a part of this playlist that my video is in. I flippin' love you guys and I will see you next time.